Hi guys, welcome to the new lesson. So you likely would have heard "seiyu" ending being used a lot in Korean sentences. 도와주세요. 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 So "seiyu" is an honorific sentence ending that is used when you want to show respect to the subject of the sentence so it can be used when talking to or talking about people who are older than you people whom you've met for the very first time or any people that you want to show respect to and this might be confusing at first because we already learned that you ending is already 존댓말 so do we have to add more politeness to 존댓말 when it's already polite and the answer is yes so, 존댓말 itself is a polite form. 존대 in 존댓말 means to treat other people with honor. So, it's like honoring other people. So, it means a speech that honors other people. But there are cases where you should use 세유 form to sound more suitable and polite. Otherwise, it does sound quite rude even if you are using 존댓말. So, for example, when you say it means is Jeff Korean good at so this means is Jeff good at Korean right and you can easily go with the present verb and a normal chundan my form here and it doesn't sound rude but you can also say you as well if you want to show respect to so in this sentences, these two are both acceptable. But let's say you want to say 제프씨 어머니는 한국어 잘하세요. So 어머니 uh, means mother. So we learned that 엄마 means mom, right? But 어머니 is a more formal and polite way to say mom. So it's kind of like mother instead of mom. So this means Jeff's mother, Korean, good at. So this means, is Jeff's mother good at Korean? And Jeff's mother is someone that you definitely have to be showing respect to, right? Because it's someone else's mother. So in this case, when you say 잘해요, it sounds a little bit rude, although it's not entirely unacceptable, but you can safely go with 잘하세요 to show respect to Jeff's mother, the subject of the sentence. And for another example, so 앉다 is a verb that means to sit down. So when you say 앉아요, it's a present verb of 앉다, right? So 앉아요 means have a seat, sit down. But let's say you are a waiter at a restaurant and you want to ask the customers to sit down. And customers are definitely someone whom you should be showing respect to, right? So in this case, you can say 앉으세요 rather than 앉아요. 앉으세요 sounds more suitable and polite. So that is the general picture of 세유 ending and let's specifically learn how to use them. So when you say 잘 지내세요? 잘 지내세요? Are you doing well? How are you doing? And 한국 음식 좋아하세요? Do you like Korean food? 한국 음식 좋아하세요? 아름다우세요? 아름다우세요? You are beautiful. 아름다우세요. And 괜찮으세요? 괜찮으세요? Are you okay? And in all of these sentences, you can see that there is no stated subject, right? There's no subject, there's only verb and adverbs and sometimes object too, right? However, it is implied that you is the subject from 세유 ending. And we'll go into this soon, so don't worry if you didn't get it. But that is not to say that 세유 ending can only be used when a subject is you. Let's look at these sentences here. So 제프의 아버지는 부자세요. So Jeff and possessive particle, right? Jeff's 아버지. Father, so 아빠, oh, so we learned that 아빠 means dad, right? And 아버지 is a more polite and formal form to say dad. So this means father. So Jeff's father, 아버지는 부자세요. 부자 means uh, a rich man. So this means Jeff's father is 
a rich man and you can see that the subject is not you it's the third party it's the third person right and you can see that seyu ending is used and same with these two 가게 주인이 친절하세요 so 가게 means a store but 가게 can also mean any offline business that sells something so this means um, uh, the owner the Juin, the owner of the store, 가게 주인이 친절하세요. So this means the owner of the store is kind. And you can also see that the subject of the sentence is the third person, not you. And 새우 can still be used. And 할아버지는 매일 운동하세요. 할아버지 means grandfather. So you can see that 할 is added before 아버지, right? So 할아버지, grandfather. 매일, every day, 운동하세요 to exercise, right? So my grandfather every day exercises. And you can also see that the third person is the subject and 새우 can still be used. And you can see that they are all third person subjects, right? So 새우 ending can be used when the subject of the sentence is you, the other person, or the third person. But it can never be used when the subject is I because that would sound very weird. And the reason why it sounds weird is that we learned that seyu ending is used to show respect and courtesy to the subject of the sentence, right? So it would be weird if you do that to yourself, right? So it would sound very weird to say 저는 피곤하세요 to mean I'm tired and 저는 운동하세요 to mean I exercise. If the subject is me, you can just go with the normal 존댓말 present form and say 저는 피곤해요 or 저는 운동해요. So again, 새우 ending is used when the subject of the sentence is you or the third person and when the subject is you, the other person, it can usually or most of the time can be removed. Because in a conversation, it is obvious that when a person uses 새우 without a subject, it automatically refers to the other person because the speaker cannot honor him or herself. So we're gonna dive more into learning how to use 새우 ending and we're gonna divide it into two cases. First, when the subject is you and second, when the subject is the third party. So first, when the subject of the sentence is you, like we learn, it's usually removable or most of the time, removable. So when someone says 예쁘세요, 예쁘 comes from 예쁘다, so this means pretty, right? So 예쁘세요 means you are pretty and 커피 한잔 주세요 means we learned coffee is coffee, right? And han chan, this is a measure word, the counter word that is used for um, a cup of something, two cups of something, right? So han chan means one cup, right? So one cup of coffee. Kopi han chan, chu se yu. Chu is the stem of the word chu da, right? To give. So this means give me a cup of coffee. You give me a cup of coffee. And a more correct translation would be, please give me a cup of coffee. 커피 한잔 주세요. This can be used when you're ordering a cup of coffee at Starbucks or a coffee shop. And the point is, the subject is removable, but you can guess that the speaker is talking to the other person by 새우, right? And how it works is 새우 is usually combined with the stem of the base verb. And we learned that there are three types of verbs, right? the B verb, ida, right? Ida and all the other verbs and then adjectives. So, so we learned that adjectives can also be called a descriptive verb. So it's treated just like verbs and follow the same rule with verb conjugation, right? So we're gonna practice conjugating verbs with 새우 ending and it's pretty easy because you can just take out the stem of the base verb and combine it with 새우. And let's start with ida verb, the B verb. So we learned that Ida's present form is 에유 and 
이에요, right? Depending on the preceding noun, if the preceding noun doesn't have 받침, then it's 에요. And if the preceding noun does have 받침, then it's 이에요. And this is the normal 존댓말 form, right? But when you want to change it to a 세요 form, then you can simply replace 에요 with 세요 and 이에요 with 이세요. So this is a more polite sounding, respect showing way to say you are, right? So for example, when you say I am a teacher, you can say 저는 선생님 이에요, right? And 저는 한국인이에요 means I am a Korean, right? And you can never go with 이세요 or 세요 when the subject is I, right? Because you cannot honor yourself. So that's why the normal uh, present verb is used. But when you want to ask, are you a teacher in polite form, you can say, so the subject is you, so it's removable. And you can just say, 선생님 이세요? Are you a teacher? Are you a teacher? 선생님이세요? Or if you want to ask, are you Korean? Are you a Korean? It works the same way you put 이세요 after 한국인 한국인이세요? Are you Korean? So these two sound way more polite than just asking 선생님 이에요 or 한국인 이에요. 안녕하세요. 한국이세요? 안녕하세요. 한국이세요? 안녕하세요. 한국이세요? So this is a perfect example that shows 세요 being used when the subject is you. 한국인이세요? Are you Korean? And 이에요? being used when the subject is I. So, 아뇨, 중국 사람이에요. So, she means I, right? So, she removed the subject here because it's obvious from the context that she's talking about herself, right? 한국인이세요? 아뇨, 중국 사람이에요. Or, 저는 중국 사람이에요. 세유 and 이에요, right? So yes, 세유 or 이세유 ending as a replacement of be verb, 이다 verb, is in many times used when you're asking a question like are you something, are you a noun? But it can also be used in a statement like when you're complimenting somebody that you are something. So when you say 미인이세요, 미인이세요 to a woman, it means you are beautiful. So 미인 here is a noun that means a beautiful woman. Bean. So this means uh, you are a beautiful woman. So bean is is a good way to compliment a woman by her looks. Or you can also say puro seyo, puro seyo. So puro is also a conglish that means a professional. So when you uh, want to compliment someone for being like professional at what she or he does, you can say puro seyo. Okay, so let's practice what we learned so far. So when you want to ask someone, are you a student? You can use plain 존댓말 and say 학생이에요. But if you want to sound more polite and respectful, you can say 학생이세요. 학생이세요. And if you want to ask, how old are you? We learned that when asking for someone's age, we use 몇 살, right? So you can say 몇 살이에요, but actually this sounds uh, very rude, especially when you're asking the age of someone who's like way older than you or people you've met for the very first time. So you can use this to like kids that you've met for the first time and just say a little one, how old are you? 몇 살이에요? 몇 살이에요? Uh, but usually mm, using 세요 ending is more suitable. But there is a more, way more polite way of asking someone's age, which is 나이가 어떻게 되세요? So this literally means, 나이 means age. So age, 어떻게, how 되세요? is it? So 나이가 어떻게 되세요? means how is your age. So this is the most polite form of asking for someone's age and notice that seyu is, is also used here. So even if the literal translation of this phrase doesn't make sense, I hope that you kind of remember this phrase all together and use it when you have to ask someone's age. 나이가 어떻게 되세요? 나이가 어떻게 되세요? How old are you? In a very respectful way. 
and which country are you from so we learned that when we say which country we use this question word right 어느 어느 나라 사람 이에요 어느 나라 사람이에요 so this means which country person are you right but if you want to be more polite or you're talking to people who you've met for the very first time you can say 어느 나라 사람이세요 어느 나라 사람이세요 which country person are you which country are you from and now let's move on to when 세요 is combined with the rest of the verbs other than 이다 verb so to be more exact it should be the stem of the base verb so when you say um you speak Korean very well. You can say 한국어 or 한국어를 정말 잘 하세요. 한국어를 정말 잘 하세요. So we learned that 잘 means well and 하 from 하다. So 하다 is a base word that means do, right? So you just take out the stem, right? And just combine it with 세요. So 한국어를 정말 잘하세요 means you speak Korean very well. And we learned that 하다 can also mean speak when you're talking about a language, right? So 한국어를 정말 잘하세요 doesn't mean you do Korean very well, but it means you speak Korean very well. And the reason why I added 으 here is because when the stem of the verb has 받침, then you should put 으세요. And if the stem of the verb doesn't have 받침 like 하, you can just easily go with 세요. So when you want to say please have a seat, like sit down, you can say 안, so 안 comes from 안다, which means to sit. So you take out the stem and you see that the stem has 받침 here, right? So that's when you put 으, 세요. So 앉으세요 is a polite way to say have a seat. And just for a heads up, this form also has an irregular form. So even if some stems have 받침 in it, sometimes 으 is not added. Just a heads up so that you don't get confused later. Uh, and we're gonna get back to it later, but uh, let's continue our lesson. And just like normal present verbs, 세요 form can also be used as imperative mood. So imperative mood is just a grammar term that means a form of request, command, or suggestion. So we learned that a present verb can be used to command, to suggest, or to make a request just like in English. Have a seat. Close your eyes. Do it quick. Give me some water. Present verbs are used, right? And they're all used in imperative mood, right? They're asking someone to do something, have someone to do something. And in Korean as well, you can conjugate verbs in present form to mean the same thing. So, to have a seat. 안다, we learned that 안다 means to sit. So conjugate this verb in present form. 앉아요. It can mean have a seat and close your eyes. 감다 means to close someone's eyes, so eyes means 눈. So 눈을 감아요. Present verb, right? And do it quick. Quick. Like quickly, right? 빨리. 빨리 means quickly, fast. 빨리 하다. 하다's present form is 해요, right? 빨리 해요. 빨리 해요. And give me some water. 물 means water. 물좀 give 주다 right 주다's present form we learned is 줘 so 줘요 물좀 줘요 so when we make a request suggestion or command we also use present verb just like in English and here from you and ding you can see that they are all in 존댓말 form however they sound a bit rude to be used to people who are older than you whom you've met for the very first time or anyone that you should be showing respect to so in those cases you can replace the present verbs to to verb 세요 form so you can say 안 두. Seyo, right? U should be added because there is a 받침 in the stem, right? 앉으세요. And 눈을 
come. Useyo, same here. The stem has patim, so useyo. Bali. So you take out the stem of the of the base for it, right? So it's not he, but you should take out ha, and then seyo. Bali haseyo. Muldrum. You take out the stem of the base verb. Chu seyo. Muldrum chu seyo. So although these two mean the same thing, the letter ones definitely sound politer. So in English as well, it's more polite to say please have a seat. Please close your eyes. Please do it quick. Please give me some water. And seyu kind of acts like please as well. Although like not entirely similar, but it adds that more politeness to the sentence. And now let's move on to when the subject of the sentence is the third person. And now that you know how seyu form generally works, this part will be a lot easier for you to understand because it's basically the same, except that you make the subject explicit this time. The subject is not hidden this time. So can you guess what these sentences mean respectively? So 저희, this one might be unfamiliar to many of you. So 저희 is a polite form, is a more polite form of 저의. So 저 means me and 의 is a possessive particle, right? So this means my, but you can also say 저희 to be more polite. So tohi means my, and sometimes it can also uh, also mean our. So tohi omoninen means my mother. My mother, papu seyo. Papu comes from papu da, this adjective, which means to be busy. So papu seyo means uh, she is busy. My mother is busy. And by putting seyo, like we learned, it shows more respect to the subject of the sentence, my mother. And same with the rest of the sentences. So, 저희, my, 아버지는, father, 교수, 세요. 교수, 세요. 교수 means professor at, at, at a college, at a university. So, my father is a professor. 아버지는 교수 세요. 지수 선배는 자주 웃으세요. 지수 is a name. And 선배 means a senior. So in English, there is no like strict boundary between like 선배 and 후배. Uh, so 선배 means uh, anyone who have been part of the group that you're in before you. So let's say you started college in 2020 and the people who are in the same college as you but who have started college uh, before you, like in 2019 or 2018 or whenever before you, they are called 선배. They are your 선배 because they came before you. And those who start college later than you, maybe like 2021, 2022 or whenever, after you attended college, they are your 후배. So you can call someone who belongs to the same group as you, but who started being in that group before you as Hyundai. So Jisoo Sambe means like a uh, Jisoo senior. Nun Taju Ususeyo. Taju means often. We learned this word, right? Ususeyo. Ut comes from Utta, which means uh, both to smile and laugh. So Jisoo Sambe Taju Ususeyo means Jisoo. Uh, Jisu Sambe, Jisu Sambe smiles often or laughs often. And Tohi Pumonimun Koyangiri Tuahaseo. Tohi Pumonim. My Pumonim means parents. Parents, Koyangi object marker, Koyangi means cat. Tuaha Seyo. Tuaha comes from Tuahada, this base verb, which means to like, right? So my parents, cat like my parents like cat so we can see that unlike when you is the subject the third party subject should be stated at the beginning of a sentence right uh, but in certain contexts where it's already obvious who the speaker is talking about then you can remove the subject even if it's third person so for example when someone asks 선생님이 왜 안 오세요? 선생님 means the teacher, right? 선생님이 왜 
Why? An is a negation of a verb, right? And o comes from oda, which means to come, right? So, teacher, why not come? So, this means why isn't the teacher coming? And you can answer, 바쁘세요. 바쁘세요. She is busy. And notice that there is no uh, subject, right? Because it's obvious from the context that she is talking about the teacher, 선생님. So in this case, it can be removed flexibly, but, but when you are starting a conversation about uh, a specific third person, then you should clearly state who the subject is. And also, when the subject is the third person, it cannot be used in imperative mood because um, the third party is not present where the conversation is taking place. So you cannot really suggest or command him or her or them to do something, right? So for third party subject, most of the time it's in a plain statements like this. So that's how you use seiyu ending. However, um, this is not all of it. And there are a couple of more things about seiyu ending that you should know. But before we move on to that, let's do some quizzes first to check how well you're following. So how do you say these uh, following sentences in Korean? So let's start from number one, peacefully go. So this also means bye in Korean. So we already learned that 안녕히 가세요 means bye, whose literal translation is peacefully go. And you can check that 새우 is also used here, right? 안녕히 가세요. 안녕히 means peacefully and 가 obviously comes from 가라 which means to go. So you go peacefully, right? Please go peacefully. Peacefully go. Bye. And you are my role model. So role model, uh, there isn't a pure Korean word for role model and we just say 롤 as accomplished to mean role model. So you are my role model. So in this case, you don't really have to state the subject, right? So, oh, 제, my, right? 제, 롤 모델, the be verb, 이세요. 제 롤 모델이세요. 제 롤 모델이세요. And here you might have questions. What if I so desperately want to say you? How do I say you in a sentence when I want to be polite? Okay, so that's a really good question. Um, and we're gonna learn separately about this in our next lesson. But just to be brief here, we learned that you in Korean is do. However, this is a panmai, right? Panmai. So how do you say do in 존댓말? So we learned that I in 반말 is da and I in 존댓말 is 저. But how about you in 존댓말? How do I say you? I'm so confused. I, I, I actually get a lot of um, questions on this. And the reason, I, I mean the, the answer is that there is no one fixed answer. But you can use the third person, um, how do you say, the third person form. So let's say when you say you are my role model, you mean you as a person who's a teacher. Then you can just say 선생님. So if it's a subject, you can say 선생님은, 선생님은 제 롤모델이세요. 선생님은 제 롤모델이세요. So in this case, 선생님 serves as you. And you can also put name here. So let's say the person that you, the name of the person that you're talking to is Lisa. So Lisa is Lisa in Korean. And you can say Lisa 씨는 Lisa 씨는 제 롤모델이에요. Lisa 씨는 제 롤모델이에요. So this time also Lisa 씨 serves as you. So yes, when you want to say you in 존댓말, you can use the third person form. So we're going to come back to it later in a separate lesson. But for now, let's move on to the next sentence. So my boss works every day. So my boss, you can say 저희 사장님은 저희 사장님은 every day 매일 We learned that time adverb should be pushed uh, to the front part of the sentence, right? 사장님은 매일 
work. 일하다, right? 일하, the base form, the stem. 일하, 체육. 사장님은, so here actually you don't have to put 저희. 사장님은 매일 일하세요. 사장님은 매일 일하세요. And when you're taking a picture of someone and he or she isn't smiling and you want to ask him or her to smile, you can say, 웃으세요. 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 Smile. And this is an imperative mood, right? Commanding someone to do something and also this one as well. And last one, my father is tall. So you can you don't really have to put 저희 because it's obvious that it's your father, right? So if you want to put it, you can, but let's remove it this time. 아버지는, do you remember how to say is tall? 키가 크다, right? Height is big. 키가 크다. 아버지는 키가 크세요. 아버지는 키가 크세요. My father is tall. Okay, so there was already a lot to take in, I know, but we have one more thing left to learn, which is the separate honorific form. So what do I mean by that? So these are all the verbs and adjectives that we know the meaning of. So 먹다 means to eat. 아프다 means to be sick. 자다 means to sleep. 말하다 means to speak, say, tell. 있다 has a lot of meanings, right? Uh, the first one is there be, right? There is or she or he stays. And then there is also a meaning of to have, right? And 주다, we all know that it means to give. So when we want to conjugate all these verbs and adjectives in 세유 ending, you're likely, you're likely gonna say 먹으세요? 아프세요, 자세요, 말하세요, 있으세요. And this one we're gonna learn separately, so let's make it into two groups. So we're like we're gonna say like this, based on what we learned so far. And I wouldn't say this is entirely wrong. Sometimes we do say it like this, but these are the separate fixed uh, honorific form of these verbs. So instead of saying 먹으세요 to mean eat in honorific form, you can just say 드세요. And instead of saying 아프세요 to mean someone is sick in honorific form, you can say 편찮으세요 and 자세요, 주무세요, 말하세요, 말씀하세요, 있으세요, and guys, I was trying to explain everything about this in this one whole video, but it's gonna take uh, way more time. I think there should be more like detailed explanation for you to kind of fully get it. So I will also make a separate video on this as well. Maybe I would title that video as Heyo Part 2. So yeah, but yes, I will definitely make a separate video on this. Okay, so we learned pretty much everything basic we need to know about Seiyu ending. And some of you might be wondering, where did Seiyu come from in the first place? And that's a really good question, and I saved it until the last in order not to complicate you too much. But now that you know how Seiyu is used in general, I think it's safe to explain it now. So Seiyu is actually a present verb that comes from Shida. This base verb. So we know that these are the base verbs, right? And the base verb of honorific form of these verbs are 이시다, 오시다, 가시다, 웃으시다, right? Because there is 받침 in the stem, 웃으시다, and 만드시다, I put these two verbs to let you guys know about irregular verbs. So you might be wondering here, why isn't it 만들 으시다? Just like 웃다 becoming 웃으시다. It's because when the stem has 리을 받침, 리을 is deleted and you just put 시다. 우 and same as 울, 우, 시다. So these are irregular verbs that you have to keep in mind. So these are the base verb, and these are also the base verb in honorific form. Honorific form, let's just say HF. 
So when you want to conjugate them in present verb, they become eu, ieu, and iseu, or seu, right? And same with these ones. Oda becomes wayu in present form. Oshida, oseu, kada, kayu, kaseu. 웃어요, 웃으세요. 만들어요, 만드세요. 울어요, 웃세요. So this is the base verb and this is the base verb in honorific form. And when they're conjugated in present tense, they all have their separate form. And conjugating base verb in honorific form is easy because you can just um, change 시다 to 세유, right? So that's where 세유 comes from. And another thing to note is that when the stem has 리을 받친, when the stem ends in 리을 받친, that's when 리을 is deleted and you just put 시다, not 으시다. Right? So it becomes 만드세요, 우세요. And as you guessed it, if the honorific form has a present form, then obviously it does have past form and the future form. And this is something that we're going to learn in our part 2 video. Okay, so before we wrap up, let's take a final quiz. So what is the difference between 사랑해요 and 사랑하세요? So it's likely from heyu ending and haseyu ending that this means I love you, right? I love you. And 사랑하세요 is in imperative mood. So it's like suggesting other people or commanding other people to love. 사랑하세요, you love. Like please love more. 사랑하세요, right? And 피곤하세요, 피곤하세요. 피곤하 comes from 피곤하다, right? To be tired. So, are you tired? 피곤하세요? Are you tired? 저분 누구세요? 저분 누구세요? So, at the very beginning of this lesson, I show you the clip of someone saying 혹시 두분 커플이세요, right? 혹시 두분 커플이세요? 혹시 두분 커플이세요? So, that person also said 분 here. And 분 is also a counter word that we didn't learn yet. But it's an honorific kind of word for 명. So 분 is used to count people. But in this case, it's also a polite way to say people or person. So you can say 저 사람 누구세요? 저 that person 누구세요? But it is more polite to say Pun to replace sara with pun when you want to show respect to the person that you're talking about. So that person, 저분 누구세요? We learned that 누구 is a question word for who, right? So who is that person? 저분 누구세요? And 어디 가세요? We learned that 어디 means where and 가, go, right? So where do you go? Where are you going? 어디 가세요? 하나만 주세요. 하나 means one. And 만 is a particle that means only. So give me only one. 하나만 주세요. And 제프 씨는 키가 작으세요. 제프 씨, Jeff, 키가 작다 means... Oh, so 키가 작다 means... We learned that this means small in height, right? I mean short, sorry, short would be the correct translation. 키가 작다. So Jeff is short. 제프 씨는 키가 작으세요. And our last one, so this is a very useful phrase that you can use. Um, so 무슨 일 하세요? We learned that 무슨 is an adjective form of what. And 일 means work. And 하세요 comes from 하다, which means to do. So what work? do you do? So this is a polite way to ask what someone's job is, what someone does for a living. So 무슨 일 하세요? What do you do? Like what do you do for a living? 무슨 일 하세요? Okay, so one last review to really make sure that you don't forget anything. 
So, seiyu ending is used when showing respect or courtesy to the subject of the sentence, right? And the subject that can be used is you, and it's usually removable, and the third person. But seiyu ending can never be used when the subject is I because it sounds weird when you uh, honor yourself, right? And the basic form of seiyu ending, how you can conjugate verb with seiyu ending is you take out the stem of the base verb and combine it with seiyu or useyu. So u is put when uh, if the stem ends in patim and if the stem doesn't have patim, you can just uh, go with seiyu. So for example, uh, these two verbs, so this one means to close, and poda we all know that this means to see or watch, right? So when you say close the door in seiyu ending, you can say door is bun, and you take out the stem, right? Tat, and you have to put u because the stem ends in patin. So bun tade seiyu means close the door, and look here like please look at here you can say yogi po yogi means here yogi po se you you don't have to put u because the stem doesn't have patim so yogi po se yo but it also has irregular forms right when the stem of the verb ends in nir patim do you remember what happens dir is deleted and you just go with yo se yu same with pal you delete lir and just go with se yu so i forgot to tell you the meaning so yolda means to open and palda means to sell so when you say bun bun right door bun yo se yo means open the door and uh, I guess you can say 저한테 파세요 so 한테 uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a particle that means um, a few things but here it means to oh sorry so to me sell so please sell it to me 저한테 파세요 and we also learned that it can the 새우 ending can also be used in imperative mood so when you're commanding or making a request or suggestion uh, 새우 ending can also be used right so i guess these all four are in imperative mood right and we also learned where 새우 comes from so 새우 is basically a present form of 시다 this base form so if sida has a present form, then it also has past and future form, which we're gonna learn in our next lesson. And we're also gonna learn separate honorific verbs, fixed honorific forms like 드시다, 편찮으시다, 주무시다, 말씀하시다, 계시다, that we're gonna learn more about this in our next lesson so yes we have a long way to go um, but I am really glad that you are continuing to keep up your study and I really hope that your hard work pays off and that you never give up until you reach the level of your dream okay so that's it for this lesson there's a lot to learn about Tayu ending it's not over yet right like I told you I'm gonna make a part two of Tayu ending um, so I understand it's not easy to take it all in at once um, but keep practicing and review what we learned over and over again and you'll get the hang of it and thank you guys for studying Korean with me and I'll see you in the next video bye